Oh, hello there. It's Christmas Day. Not the day that I'm releasing this. Instead, no, it's specifically the day that I'm filming this. Uh, it's a time to spend with friends and family, eat delicious homemade food, and give gifts to whoever on you love. And I'm spending it by myself, sat in the dark, drinking an entire bottle of wine. I'm fine, by the way. But as it is the season of giving gifts, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is just on the horizon... What are you doing? Why not play the Final Fantasy VII Remake DLC that I totally forgot existed? As a treat. Uh, I'm aware that I do actually own a Final Fantasy Christmas jumper, uh, which would make a lot more sense to wear for this video. Ho, 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 ho! Uh, but this one was actually a literal Christmas gift from my brother for this year. It's Christmas Day and I'm wearing it, um, so it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense, okay? It, it's, it's just a jumper that I'm wearing. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission is the DLC for 2020's Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was part of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, the PS5 update. So it's basically Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate Intermission, which is a DLC for a game that was good. Square Enix, please, I'm begging you, stop this. Just Get some help. But why didn't I play it? I famously love Final Fantasy VII. Precious angel boy. <sighs> well, uh... So anyway, Intermission follows Yuffie, the optional ninja character that you may have had your belongings stolen by in the original. She is an incredibly adorable goofball, filled with life and character. But also, secretly, a bit of a badass. <laughs> but very openly, a goofball. <sighs> she is in Midgard to meet up with Avalanche and steal a super powerful materia from Shinra HQ to help the nation of Wutai get big in war and destroy Shinra. Thankfully, she's arrived on the cusp of Sector 7, where Avalanche is. Hey, I know Avalanche, they're those guys from the game. I can't wait to meet all of my favorite characters. On her journey through the slums, you'll come across all sorts of other references, like these guys. You okay? Anybody home? Yeah, that's how I pretty much feel on my morning commute as well. And it's fun! It's just Yuffie scampering around until, well, eventually fights happen. Now, it's been like four years since I've played Final Fantasy VII Remake, meaning I don't really remember how to play it. And even the game itself had a little pop-up being like, hey, by the way, you should really play the game again or play the game at all to reacquaint yourself with how things are done. because. We're not going to tutorialize anything, and we very much expect you to know how to play the game and do the combat. I've played video games before though, so I know how to do combat. Ah, nuts. Well, I've got the hang of things now. Ah, nuts. This time though, this is gonna- Ah, nuts. Yuffie is fast and punchy, diving around the combat arena with her huge shuriken jumping into aerial combos like there's no tomorrow. And it's just cool. She can also then throw her shuriken and unleash an array of ranged ninjutsu, which all change depending on what element you're attuned to. It's really fun and interesting. Speaking of interesting, 
Oh no! That guy's in trouble! He's being attacked! Quickly, Yuffie! We need to go and save him! Well, we need to be careful on the ladders, obviously. <laughs> Wouldn't want to fall down. <laughs> ah. Oh man, I guess we need to go higher. Health and safety rules sure are important. If you slipped here, no one would even hear you scream, and then, then you'd just be left to be eaten by a mountain moogle. <sighs> okay, now we can save him. This is important business after all. Whee! Right, eventually Yuffie finds her way to a familiar hellhole. The Sector 7 slums. And ho oh, oh, ho! I can't wait for her to meet the members of Avalanche, the gang, the boys, the mad lads, the dogs, the saviors of the planet, the several tops and their singular bottom. The. <laughs> Yo. What? There's our palm! Wait a minute, who the hell are these losers? You know, this isn't the avalanche I know and love. This is a an adult man's head grafted onto the body of an actual child. Is this one of Hojo's latest hellish experiments or something? Who are you? So you're avalanche? I'm Jija. Follow me. W wait up! Turns out the avalanche we know are a splinter crew who broke away due to being too violent and therefore actually effective at enacting change. As long as that change is things blowing up. So we're left with a room full of randos. A guy named Billy Bob, this guy, this girl, and then this guy and his weird Weird body. Seriously, how old are you? But the new characters don't stop there. Introducing Yuffie's companion, we've got Sonon. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. I'm Sonon Kasakabe. Oh, he's so cool and handsome. At any rate, I'm looking forward to working with you, boss. Now then, fans of Final Fantasy VII might be sat there thinking, these characters weren't in the original. So, what's happening? Are they going to be staying around? Are they being shoehorned in? Is Sonon going to be sad in the background, awkwardly, of every future scene? Is Cloud going to spend a lot of time going, Where's Sonon? <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. But all of this is irrelevant because the most pressing part of Yuffie's quest isn't sneaking into Shinra HQ. It isn't about helping her home nation. No, it's board games. Yes, while Cloud was having his dalliances with Aerith, having just fallen through a church, the entirety of Sector 7 slums became obsessed with Fort Condor. The baffling mini game from the original is back, and this time, the best strategy isn't to just lose and then beat up the boss yourself. No, instead you're playing a game of unit deployment and management with this rock paper scissors style backbone. It's genuinely quite interesting and was naturally the thing I immediately put all of my attention into. rapidly learning that the most effective strategy is to just absolutely spam units until you achieve victory, claiming your title as King of Games. Ah, see, I, I knew this jumper was actually relevant for a reason. I planned it all along. Outside of being a fun minigame, it is also a nice excuse to interact with a variety of previous characters, like Jesse and Chadley. When I next wish to test a hypothesis, I would be honored if you would agree to kick its butt. Or the motorcycle guy, who now spends his entire time talking about how he wants to pin Cloud down over his motorcycle and f him in the ass as the revving of the engine vibrates until he so hard that Cloud's ass doesn't know left from right. I may wish I knew, but I can tell you that he has a real 
Need for speed, as they say. And while he boasts a very large sword, his first love is plainly his mount. Like, seriously, it's all he talks about now. It's bad board game etiquette. Just don't make me come. This alongside one other main side quest, which involves gathering posters for the happy turtle. Yeah, um, and then also the absolutely nails box destroying assault course means that in terms of extra stuff going on, it's quite thin on the ground. I mean, yes, there is the simulation fight against Ramu, but well. No yeah, death. But that's enough getting distracted. We've got the story to continue. Quickly, Sonon, that strange guy is being chased. We've got to help him. Boss, we might not be back for a while. Let's just stock up before leaving. I excuse me, do you mind, Sonon? We're literally in the middle of chasing someone. Yes, whether it be climbing ladders with the speed of a particularly high-vis clad safety inspector, being stopped mid-chase because it's a point of no return, or even just taking the time to enjoy destroying thousands of boxes for fun, the game has the odd pacing issue, where it tries to provide this sense of urgency while simultaneously still being a video game. But that's fine, because this game is still filled with so much character. <laughs> Yuffie's energy and goofball antics is infectious and makes it weird enough that you don't really mind if it just sort of feels a little wonky. During this entire chase segment, which involves rotating platforms as slowly as possible, you're treated to incredible music the entire time. Tell me, do you like chase jazz? On top of Yuffie's antics and Sonon's oh brother mentality, You've got Scarlet, who acts with near pantomime levels of evil that you'd come to expect from Shinra executives. But oh, how the mighty are fallen. Wutai colluding with Avalanche and resorting to terrorism. <laughs> I always thought the Wutaians an honorable people. And it's just kind of fun. Does it make sense for Scarlet to humor Yuffie and Sonon, infiltrating their deepest research levels? No! Is she gonna chew the scenery as she personally gets in the Eva to murder a child? <laughs> yeah, of course. This will be a memory to cherish for the rest of your lives. All 30 seconds of them. It's just quite fun. However, nothing really has enough presence in the world for it to feel normal. Fort Condor only has like eight combatants and they can be dealt with surprisingly quickly. And about the same time though, there's so much more space for it to expand and room for it to explore. But it doesn't, so it just ends up feeling a little awkward. Same with the story and other characters. Billy Bob and his crew aren't given a lot of screen time to establish any care for them. And while we're meant to care about this freak of nature, I don't. This leaves this underlining feeling of something not quite sitting right. It feels shallow. This is experienced most in the combat. It goes to great length to tell you how you now have a perfect guard materia, allowing for Dark Souls style parries and perfect dodges for you to enact. Except if you've not played the game for three years, it all feels like it doesn't quite work and Yuffie attacks so quickly that finding that timing to block is non-existent. It feels like there just aren't enough actual fights in place to get a good grasp of these new abilities. And specifically, Yuffie's abilities. You can do cool synergy attacks with Sonon, but if I ever really knew what that did or how it worked, 
then my own brain is actually lying to me. Sadly, in nearly every part, it just feels a little spotty. The point is, the DLC is a little short. It's two chapters, which is essentially two dungeons, uh, which runs about four hours in total, maybe a bit more, with a couple of extra hours it's thrown in to really fully integrate yourself into the world of Fort Condor. But it provides an experience that is primarily carried by Yuffie's silliness, her goofiness, to fill an otherwise empty story. It is an intermission, and it definitely feels like it. Yuffie, however, is a great character to carry this, because otherwise we could have just had, I don't know, a little cat doll running around who's Scottish for some reason, and then it ending on like the sad cat looking at the plate drop of the of, of Sector 7 and being like, oh, I feel for this little cat doll so much. Instead, we get bubbly, delightful Yuffie having to come to terms with the cruelty of the world and that despite her protestations, she's not actually an adult and that maybe she is just a child in way over her head. You asshole! I'm not a kid! And oh my god, did it make me sad. But would I spend money on it? No, not at all, no. I got it for set technically free because it's in the PlayStation Plus Extra. If you've got that, highly recommend doing that because £16 for this is kind of wild, especially when it basically what most people want from it are the like final closing cutscenes featuring the main gang, which are adorable, or the extra bit where it's like, hey, do you remember Zach and how that's all weird now? What's going on there? Because otherwise, you're just left with the fact that deep ground exists, and which means that, well, you know, Dirge of Cerberus is a lot more relevant to the story than it ever should be. Oh no. Hello, and thank you for watching my video. S seasons? Greetings, I guess. Uh, unless you're having a bad one, in which I hope you're okay. Um, that was a video. Oh, Jeremy, what have you done? about Final Fantasy VII. Oh, you're a wiggly boy. Okay, okay, Jeremy, okay. Anyway, uh, that was a video about Final Fantasy VII's DLC. Um, hoping it was a quick and fast one to round out the year. However, it ended up being about as long as a normal video, despite the game having nothing. Um, but if you enjoyed it, the video, let me know. If you have thoughts about the DLC, let me know. It's just a fun DLC. Otherwise, you know, I was going to use Jeremy Clawburn as an emotional blackmail, but he is in deep in the source of pipe cleaners. Oh, he's on my leg. Um, anyway, thank you. Goodbye. See you in the new year. Here are the other videos have been here the entire time. Bye. Oh, oh, big, big lad. Ugh.